This is the Ross Developers Podcast, episode 129. Hello, Ross Developers, and welcome to the Ross Developers Podcast, the program, the podcast that gives you insights from the experts about how to program your robots with Ross. This is Ricardo from The Construct, and today I would like to dedicate this episode to all the Ross developers out there that think that the, you know, the ChatGPTs and Copilot and all those things they are not here to take our job, but instead they are here to help us do more, be more efficient, uh, do better programs, faster, more intelligent programs. So if that is the case, if you think in this way, then this episode is dedicated to you. Um, today we are going to talk about generative AI um, tools for robotics. But before going into that, I would like to show you about our course that we have at the Construct about generative AI for robotics. And, and this is an interesting course where we are using, we are teaching you how to, to create your own models and also how to apply them to control ros based robots. So you will be able to provide instructions to the robots about how to turn into a corner, so go forward and then stop there, these kind of things, then your generative model will automatically generate the commands in ROS for you and implement those. So let's go to the meat of the episode today. And it is my pleasure to introduce you to Tomoya Fujita that you probably already know. But for those of you who already don't, Tomoya is an architect and engineer at the Sony RDC US lab in the United States. He's also a ROS expert, and he's a member of the ROS TSC committee. He's been in the podcast already a couple of times, and now he's going to talk about a very, very interesting application that he has developed, ROS2 AI. Welcome to the podcast, Tomoya. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm from where? Yeah. Yes. Thanks for having me. Uh, our pleasure. Always our <laughs> pleasure. I remember the last time that we met and you, I interviewed you. We were in, in Japan, actually, for the yeah, Roscon. Yeah, that was really fun. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Roscon 2022 in Kyoto. Yes. And yeah. we had super cool background. Super cool Japanese garden. Yes. As a background. Yeah. I was, remember that. Yes. And, <laughs> and, nice. and Camilo talking in the background and making noise. Yeah. <laughs> and we had to yeah. tell hey, I we, do remember that. Also, right? <laughs> Camilo, salute salutation for you, my, my friend. Also. Okay, excellent. Then uh, let's talk about this uh, code that you have created and you have posted um, as open source, which is called ROS2 AI. What it is ROS2 AI? Yeah, so the ROS2 AI is just, uh, the currently, uh, it's just uh, one of the implementation as the sub-command uh, based on ROS2 CLI. So uh, it's just a plugin. So you, if you install ROS2 AI, you can see the sub-command using starting, like you can type in like ROS2 space AI. So it's kind of like sub-command the ROS2 command line interface to iterate with like um, AI, uh, currently using OpenAI. Yeah, mm. that's the, that's what it is at this moment. Okay, but what, what can we do with this command? So we type ROS2 space AI and then yeah. what else? So uh, there are uh, like options, so ROS2 AI and we at this moment, we have three options, like mm -hmm. uh, status, query, and execute. So status is just checking, like, connection. Uh, just, you know, like, checking, like, uh, if you have, like, a, uh, appropriate OpenAI key to access the OpenAI server. So that's just a status command. 
just check everything works okay. And the query is something you can ask for the AI. So, hmm. uh, for example, like a ROS2 AI query, what is a topic? So the AI is going to answer, hey, the ROS2 AI is something blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. And th that's, that's what it is. And the last one is execute. So uh, execute is like AI is going to execute the appropriate command based on, on your query. For example, like if you type in like ROS2 AI execute, uh, hey, uh, I need all the topics. And then the AI is going to uh, comprehend that the, what needs to be executed on the CLI, and it's going to construct the command line and execute in behalf of you. So you don't need to now remember the, any Rust CLI commands. That's the uh, execute option. Excellent. So, yeah. for example, if I want to have the uh, list of nodes, I can t type Rust to AI execute. Uh, give me the list of nodes. Yes. And then Absolutely. it will. Or I can say yeah. uh, something else, like, uh, what is yeah, the yeah, list yeah. of nodes? Or yeah. which nodes are running at present? Yeah, something like that. You can even change a parameter. So, like, uh, hey, the Rust AI, can you change the parameter uh, belongs to this node into, like, true or false, this kind of thing. So, it's, it depends on AI. So, uh, I'm not like a uh, hundred percent sure because it depends on AI. Maybe mm -hmm. the some query cannot be uh, translated into the commands. So, but as far as uh, I experienced, uh, most of the query can be executed by the AI. Oh, excellent! So, it's uh, can I say that this could be like a substitute of the regular ROS2 CLI? That we have command line yes. interface, right? Yeah. So if, uh, if, for example, like uh, that's that comes back to the original, like my interest. So I was uh, thinking the command line. There are many command line interfaces <laughs> in the world. Yes. For example, if you are using <laughs> Linux, you don't know that all of the command line interfaces. So yeah. you have to search, and when you have to search, you have to type, click and trying to find the appropriate information that you need. But that's, that, that, that activity is not the answer for you. So maybe you just want to get some answer. What exact command needs to be issued on the command line? So, I mean, like, <laughs> so that, that's the, the original reason. So using ROS2 AI, maybe uh, in the future, you don't need to remember any of like ROS2 command. You just type in like general language and uh, hey, I want this, and you get that. That's the that's the what should be, I guess. I think I also agree with you. So uh, I'm especially very bad at remembering all the options, <laughs> and uh, yes, I rely a lot on the tab key. So when the tab key doesn't auto complete or doesn't provide yeah. too many options or whatever, then I'm I'm kind of lost on the. <laughs> yeah, and besides that. I mean, like a maintainer's perspective, I yeah. do develop like some ROS2 CLI commands, and you know things change, right? So, for for example, like hey, we did create, we did support like a new command option, but it turns out we we need to like duplicate it, and change we're gonna it. give some duplication period until the user knows it, and this kind of like you know like a maintenance is really not really good. Yes. So if we conceal those activities, the based on the AI, maybe the maintainers doesn't need to know anything about it. Just change and the AI knows it and user doesn't need to know anything. Mm. So uh, this kind of like uh, development is also good. Yes, but then in that case, you will need to retrain the model in somehow, in some way, right? Yeah. And then yeah. how, how uh, so that's my, my next question. So how you ha have you trained this system? So are you relying on the already models, uh, already existing models that have been trained in ROS? Or have you trained by yourself? Yeah, so that's a very good question. So the currently, the, as an implementation, uh, we just rely on the GPT. Mm -hmm. So it's like a general uh, network. Okay. Yeah, network. But we do have some like context 
to load up to the AI. So the AI knows that we are going to ask Ross to relate to the questions. Okay. And AI knows, AI is like configured, hey, I am the expert for the Ross 2. Mm -hmm. But in general perspective, I'm saying like, it does not have any idea about your dedicated environment or anything. So what you, currently you... we just use some properties and general GPT mm -hmm. for now. So, but that, that's a good question. So what I'm working on is trying to figure out like how we can tune the AI. Maybe, the, maybe you want to ask some specific questions. It's related to only your environment, right? Mm -hmm. So this is going to be the next step. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, then I understand. Then uh, you, you are using this tool. I mean, you have uh, created this tool by using the knowledge base yes. up to the point that GPT was trained. Yes. Right? That maybe, uh, I don't, I remember that GPT 3.5, it's been trained until the year 2020 or something like this. And then, yeah. so any other, let's say, so if there is a new release of ROS2 and then it's something changes, something is being, uh, in the CLI has been introduced as a new or something like that, then this tool will not work so far at present, yeah. right? I mean, it will yeah. work, but it will not be able to take advantage of these new things in ROS. That's a very good question. So I am interested in that. And uh, that's actually problems. And uh, I think we can see some, a couple of approaches. The, the thing is that what we can do with like AI integration. That's because uh, if, we, if we take this path, it has to be fast to retrain the network for the open AI. Yes, right? that's right. And maybe the maybe second option is we can upload some tuning the best of like distribution. So, so the AI knows uh, the new information based on the general the GPT network, but we can upload some like the new distro information to the AI. Exactly. Like retrain the yeah. best of the general one. And third one is I think uh, I the OpenAI provides the more flexibility. For example, like a function calling. So maybe we can wrap some functions. Uh, based on OpenAI API, mm -hmm. and uh, I think the AI can create like arguments based on the query from the user, so mm -hmm. that maybe we can call the callback. That is kind of like a plugin uh, in the Rust2 AI, mm -hmm. and then respond to the user. So, yeah, there are some ideas, uh, and uh, but the, what you mentioned as a problem is the problem. Because there is a delay, yeah. and uh, it's not perfect. Yeah, yeah, of course. So, of course. Yeah, that, that's a very good question. It's, so, yeah, so it's, it's just to state uh, to the point. So this tool, ros 2 ai has just been released uh, some weeks ago. So, if, of course, it's, it's the first version, the first release. So <laughs> it's going to be improving so far and yeah. as the time progresses. And actually, I think that... You had a lot of success when you released. So a lot of people was, were interested in, in the tool, right? Yeah, I got some like DMs and uh, questions. Even the somebody is uh, willing to support. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, hey, <laughs> this is really great. It's great. And uh, I mean, like, uh, in the future, what I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to see uh, if this the Rust AI. It's not only for like, uh, hey, you have someone to execute the command based mm -hmm. on the query. I think that's going to be, ROS2 AI is, could be something like a customer support or agent to respond uh, your professional services to the customer, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have like a customer, like consumer service or something uh, on the on site, maybe you have some team standing by to respond some problems and questions. And the feature is that like, uh, they have some specific environment. But if we have something, uh, ROS2 AI agent Expert. running on, yeah, experts on your site, and he knows what is going on in your ROS2 system, 
Yes. Probably he can do something in behalf of you. For example, <laughs> like, hey, this node is not working. What is going on? And he checks the node status and lists everything. Hey, this topic is not publishing or something. So maybe that could that could be done. Oh, awesome. so that it, is awesome. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So maybe not too much details, but uh, but it can know something like, hey, this is not working. This topic is not publishing or this is a failure uh, based on the log file or something. So I think the first, you know, like status check can be done uh, by the Rust2 AI. So mm-hmm. that's the, my final <laughs> you know. goal. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. Okay. That would be awesome. And then, that, so, you know, the typical problem when you are compiling your code of C++ and something goes r- wrong and then the encrypted message that appears there and says uh, um, error whatever whatever and you don't understand where is the error because that message doesn't is not telling you hey this is wrong this pointer is void it's not telling you this it's just telling you something that happens because of the error but you don't know what the error is so in that case your suggestion will be very cool because it will be able to tell you exactly what is missing yeah but apply to ROS, right? Yeah, yeah. So it, the, the, the reason, I mean, like a, this, this idea can be applied to anything. For example, like a Linux command mm-hmm. or a Linux agent, right? Mm-hmm. But I think that's going to be too big. So that, but my idea is like, uh, let's not do something really big word. I mm-hmm. think uh, it makes more sense. Hey, we have some specific environment and a specific perspective, mm-hmm. and then maybe that's where AI comes in because yeah. we can train the AI, hey, you need to know this kind of data. Yes. And you are the experts on specific this framework Same. or something. Yeah. So I think that's going to be easier and uh, practical to yes. take advantage of AI. Yes. Do you... That's why I came up with this idea, Ross. Ah, okay, okay, okay. It's like restricting the domain then yes. it makes it possible to actually be useful, yeah. right? That's exactly. Right. Uh, so if, that, if your topic is too big, I think it's, it's going to be really hard to get the data. Yeah. And, uh, what kind of data we have to upload to create a <laughs> network or something? So it's going to be chaos, right? Yes. But that, this, with, within the specific domain, you know, uh, because it's limited data and uh, restricted knowledge. So I think that's going to be easier. Mm-hmm. Do you remember uh, something in AI, in the AI field that was called expert systems? Uh, no. Okay, yes. So when I started, this is because you are very young, and then that's an uh, old-fashioned AI that was very, is old, is in the 80s. So they were systems of AI that were expert on a very narrow field. But how they build it is by putting rules after rule after rule. So actually, I worked developing expert systems at that time. And then, not in the 80s, okay? I'm not that old, but later. So we have to interview the expert and ask him, but what happens when this? What happened with that? And then you encode those into rules, into a program. And then at the end, the program can follow all these thousands of rules at the same time. So they are experts, but in a very narrow field because you need to specify all the if, then, if, then, if, yeah. then, if, then, you know, all this. In this case, is uh, what you're suggesting, it reminds me there, but in a more, even um, the granularity of the if, then is even smaller and it contains so many, many, many thousands or, or even millions of rules which are encoded into the neural network, of course. So it's not a, sp- it's not a specific if-then rule, but it's encoded into the neural network knowledge. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me. I see. Uh, it rem- it reminds me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then I wanted to ask you about, uh, uh, or to tell you also about, the, you mentioned about retraining the, the model. And then uh, the, the course that we have, uh, created, which is called Generative AI for Robotics, we teach how to do this. So we we depart from the 
the model that is published already. Uh, yeah. And then we take it and we teach how to retrain it for a specific do knowledge, uh, a specific domain, in this case for ROS. So maybe that uh, following those instructions, you can do the retraining that you are aiming oh, that for. Oh, great. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm interested in that. I will show you. Uh, yeah, I'm actually trying to study, uh, take some time, and allocate some time to learn more how to, what's in it for us and what we can do with the AI network. So that will be really interesting. Yes. Yeah, that means we can work together. Okay, great. <laughs> Excellent. Or, or, or you, you can take our course and then retrain by yourself because we are teaching yeah, how, to, how to retrain, yeah. you know, how to do the retraining. Excellent. And then um, let me tell you, oh, we, yeah, when you mentioned about the, uh, the knowledge, so, so many, so many forks here, so many ideas, then is um, about the context. So you mentioned it's about the context of ROS2, but yep. is ROS2 AI able to remember the previous questions that you have asked on the terminal? Oh. Yeah, so uh, the, the answer is right now, no. So mm -hmm. it's like a single shot. Okay. So internally, as the implementation, uh, I did implement using like OpenAI, the Python API to call the chat, uh, completion request, just a single shot. That's a single. So the AI and the ROS2 AI implementation, they don't know that what question has been asked previously. Mm -hmm. So that means you cannot say, like some questions like, hey, uh, is the topic A is available? Mm -hmm. And uh, the, maybe Rust AI answers yes. Mm -hmm. And then you, you cannot ask something like, can you subscribe it? Because it does not have any idea about it. Uh, right? so see. There's no session uh, at this moment. Okay. But that, that is one of the scope because that's something user wants to interact with AI. Exactly. That's a conversation. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. So I think that's doable. Uh, either, uh, I think the session is supported for OpenAI API, so we can just use it. Or if it doesn't, it doesn't support, we can cache the previous query in the message uh, in the ROS2 AI implementation and uh, upload these, uh, all these previous questions together and then the AI knows what needs to be answered. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm pretty sure that the API should support. Yeah, I the, so. yeah. I'm pretty sure because, I mean, it's one of the basic things in the... Yeah. In the so is, I think it's very doable, this, for the next version. Yeah. Yes, Ex excellent. I agree. Excellent. And then, so uh, let's say that I install ROS2 AI on my computer. So how... So just by installing the, downloading the package, then can I just execute the, or do I need to configure something on my system? So the, basically the installation is pretty easy. Uh, mm -hmm. Either you like build a source code, just, you know, git pull uh, mm -hmm. to AI and build your environment, or uh, I have like a Docker containers ready, so you can just Docker run. Uh, Rust to AI that based on your distribution that you use, mm -hmm. and so e either way, uh, Rust to AI works okay. And the the the, the requirements to use uh, Rust to AI is that you need to have the Open AP Open AI API key. Uh -huh. that's it. Okay. So that is that is the one of the something you must have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's about the money. <laughs> ah, okay, so <laughs> it's a it's a paying pay, yeah. paying account that you need. Yeah. Ah, okay. So I I'm I'm paying by my myself and uh, my, because this is my personal project. Uh -huh. Yeah. So can we use your key? Uh, no. <laughs> 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 it it just... needs to and that's going to consume in a minute, right? <laughs> it was just so trying. That's the, that's, yeah, that's the also like uh, something I want to discuss with the community. If this turns out useful, right? Because yes. if the as Rust two community, if we can support this kind of like activity, hey, we want to have something Rust two agent, and that's for everyone. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can sponsor it together, and uh, you know, like. Uh, Yes. Like something, something like that. Exactly. Yeah. Provide the service, let's say. Yeah. It's provided by the ROS community. 
for the yeah. TSC or whatever it's, it's whatever right. it is. Yeah. Yes. Oh, But okay. it's very useful, right? Yes. So it, especially for the beginners. Yes. So we can have more people to the community, and I think the people should be excited to the open source activity. That's the I think the most important thing. So that's I think it works for both of us. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. and also can be just idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so people of the uh, that are taking decisions in the ROS, well, actually, you are one of them. You are in the TSC committee, so yeah, you take decisions. So all the others, <laughs> <laughs> all the others there, yes, please listen to Tomoya and his proposal. I think it's very, very interesting, <laughs> and also it can be used for uh, the answering the questions. At Discord, well, or whatever it's now the forum. Yeah. It can be so useful. That, yeah, it can be useful. So I think this uh, Rust to AI can be like practical and uh, I think like commercial like service. So I think that <laughs> I'm not sure, but <laughs> I think that's going to make sense. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah. So, what yeah. about? Let, so, let me give you a proposal. So, what about a subscription to ROS? Let's say so. This is for Open Robotics, okay? So, they provide this subscription that gives you free access to the API, and then yeah. Open Robotics can have some income. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because the cost the, is yeah. not is, is so. Yeah, I, I I don't really think about like a business logic. So, okay. but I think that that's a good proposal, right? So uh, that's something we can do with Open Robotics or the other TSC members, and also some providers, robots, robot providers to consumer devices, or something because they do need to have something like this customer support mm-hmm. or some agent to get to know that uh, what is going on and this kind of like a situation to support the customer. So if we have something really great as a community, it's easy to do that. That means we can have more customers as a ROS community, uh, as an open source. I think that would make sense, yeah. Okay, okay. let's see. So uh, uh, we need to distribute this podcast so they get into their minds yeah. and then start to think. And <laughs> So they, then you get a better sale when you, you yeah. propose to them. <laughs> Okay, then um, let me see, because we have been jumping over the questions and I, I need to check which one have been done and not, <laughs> which one doesn't. And so, yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so what about in, inside the ROS to AI, there is a very interesting document that you have prepared that you are explaining how it works and also some examples. And there are some interesting videos about multi-language documentation. So how does it work? Yeah, yeah. so uh, Rust AI, uh, it's the, the front end uh, for the open AI. That mm. means you can ask any questions in your other language. So mm. either English my, in my case, like Japanese, it doesn't matter. You just type in whatever you want, and then it's going to respond uh, any questions, uh, you know, based on your question. Uh-huh. So if you ask a question in Japanese, uh, it is going to respond with Japanese. For and example, the same thing goes to the execute command. So you just tell tell it to execute this command in Japanese. He's going to respond. It's Japanese, but he's going to execute. The, the command the based on that you are query so yeah that's something it it can do this is impressive right because it's breaking also, yeah the barrier yeah so also it can answer the question right so 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 the, I mean like a uh, there's been like many discussions about how to support multi-language documentation, mm-hmm. e- even Rust too, right? Mm-hmm. So there's a th- uh, there's ongoing threads and uh, discourse discussion. Can we and should we support multi-language? Because the, now, currently we have only the English documents. That's mm-hmm. the main line. And uh, I don't know this joint yet. Uh, that we need to discuss more. But the, let's take a look at the other 
like open source project, mm -hmm. like uh, the CNCF, like cloud native. Mm -hmm. So they do have multi-language support. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the documentation page, the main line is English, but you can you know, choose like uh, Japanese, Korean, Chinese, uh, Spanish. Uh, there are many multi-language support, right? It is good. But on the other hand, uh, I think that's going to be the pain uh, because every single like multi-language supported documentation on the top page, you can see this is not the latest information. And yeah. my question is, do you want to really see that? No. Probably no. Because you know it's not the correct information. Correct. Right? <laughs> and the problem comes back to us. And we have to catch up with every day, uh, every time the main line changes documentation. Yes. And that's going to be the maintenance uh, Problem. Effort. Yeah. Right. So that's going to be the problem coming back to us. So my, the the idea is like, uh, hey, let's make AI do that. Yeah. Maybe you sh we shouldn't do it. Just just we just focus on, hey, we have to make sure that correct, precise information in the main line in English. That's something we have to do. And then any other languages. AI is going to translate yeah. to you, and you can get the answer. Yeah. So that, that's the basic idea. Uh -huh. So we can put more effort on the main line. Yes. The perfect documentation, and then ev any other language can be taken care of by the AI. Yes. That's the the basic idea. I think that's gonna that that makes sense for me. Yes. Yeah. It's excellent. It's 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 a very good idea, and I think that, that that's the future. Definitely, that's yeah. a future because what you have just said, it's impossible. You will need to hire a team of translators on a regular basis. And yeah. then, the, then the problem also is to, to manage them. I, I'm sorry, it looks, like, it looks like because we suffer this in our, uh, at the construct with our material because we, we translate some, some things and then... It's a problem to manage. It looks like, oh, you, you, you hire some person and then it's going to be well done, but, but it is not. So yeah. it is not. So it's a, it's a huge problem on top of writing the documentation. You know, you create the main line and then somebody has to translate, but you have to keep an eye on the translations and because otherwise they are poorly done or not done or then that, that's a problem, especially in technical terms. Because yeah. the translators, they don't know about what we are talking. And the people that may know, they are not interested on in doing translations. Exactly. So it's like they have to commit. Yeah. Right. At, at least like a specific time window. Hey, yeah. you, need to, you need to commit like one year to translate from this main line documentation to like Spanish, Japanese, whatever it is. And you have to commit it. And if we have like 10 languages to support, you need 10 guys standing by every day, right? Yeah, so it doesn't make sense. It does not scale. No, it so, doesn't. Yeah. So, and the, the problem is uh, could be worse or because the, if somebody left, yeah. and then <laughs> it's terrible. that documentation it's is just garbage. It's right? terrible. And yeah. we have to keep it because it's there, but people know, hey, it's not the information that we can read for. That's just garbage. Yes. So maybe that's something we shouldn't do, I think. Uh, yes, yeah. that's right. This is, this is right. I completely agree with you, and I understand because we also suffer in this way. So <laughs> then at present, then ROS2 AI already supports receiving the instructions in their model language. Is there any limitation about the languages? For example, it is uh, Arabic supported or, I don't know, Urdu is supported? Do you have any uh, restriction on this that you are aware? Uh, I'm not sure. I tried some languages, but uh, not everything. So I'm not even sure. Okay. Yeah. Then that, 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 that's why I did open source it. Yes. <laughs> like, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Because, yeah. Get more feedbacks. Hey, for example, like uh, some, actually, he is one of the Sony members. Like, he responded B because this is a personal project. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't do it in Sony Activity, mm -hmm. but he responds like, uh, "Hey, in China, they don't use OpenAI officially." Mm -hmm. So that's something I didn't know. So this kind of like a feedback is really good for me mm -hmm. because 
I mean, like I, I, I had, I had no idea about that, right? But yeah. I can get the feedback, and in that case, maybe we should support something else uh, as a backend AI service. Mm -hmm. and that would be that would be really useful. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So. The, yeah. Then for all the audience that is there listening to this podcast, please try this tool and then uh, try to query on your mother tongue and then provide this feedback to Tomoya. I'm going to put a link to in the show notes here. Yeah, and so they, they will contact you on your LinkedIn. I will put a link uh, on your LinkedIn so they will request your... Yeah, if, uh, yeah that, that's really helpful. I mean, like if I see the problem, that would be really interesting. Yes. Because... Uh, Probably I didn't know, and uh, how can we address this issue or something? Exactly. So please, audience, try that in your mother tongue and uh, send the feedback to Tomoya because then you will be supporting this uh, interesting open source project and making Rust better. So there it is, the challenge for the audience. Yeah, sorry. So coming back to the, the like a quest, like questions about Rust to. Uh, the, the other thing is uh, the reason that I did implement that for the Rust AI is usually what we do every day is like uh, if you want to know something like, hey, I want to know how to use Rust to CLI mm -hmm. and something likely that you can do is like you open the browser and Google it and try to find Rust to documentation mm. and you have to check distribution and try to find appropriate page and yes. now you can find the answer. <laughs> yes. Right? But we don't want to do that, right? No. Because something you, something you need is just to know what needs to be, you know, like how, how to type in the command. Yes. Right? So if you have a question, you need the answer. Yes. Without typing or quest, <laughs> typing or browsing yes. on the internet. So, so this is directly to the AI system. So if you have questions, just type in the question and you will get the answer without any typing or searching on the internet. That's the, you know, much shorter and closer communication to the oh. AI to get the answer. Directly. Oh, okay, okay. That's excellent. That's ex excellent. Then, uh, then uh, by doing this, we are substituting all this search uh, amount of time and also to figure out the response which is not trivial because sometimes you don't, uh, you are not able to figure out the, the answer to your question that you want to, to, to actually uh, find. So in this case, how, how precise it is the, the answer that provides ROS2 AI? So far, I, I think I can have really good answer uh, at this moment. Can you I give me an I example? For example, like uh, you can ask, like what is QoS reliable? Okay, and that's gonna answer. Like transient local is something like this and this kind of stuff. So, I think it can answer any general questions related to the ROS2. Mm -hmm. And uh, but yeah, as I mentioned, uh, we should do more like fine tuning. We c we can do more. So, uh, for example, like uh, what kind of like distribution? Are you using, and uh, is that fast RTPS or Cyclone DDS? This kind of stuff. So, I think that we can do more fine tuning the the best on your environment to answer your questions. Yeah, exactly. So, but that would be based on the environment of the person that is using ROS two AI, right? You mean the yeah. compute the actual robot or computer that is running. Exactly. Right, right. Yes. Yeah. 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 Because at present, is it is it kind of agnostic of all this? It's, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. But that's not. I mean, like it, there are two ways. Like uh, they are asking some like general questions, mm. or if they have the problem, it's likely that problem is related to their environment. Uh -huh. So, I yeah. think we we eventually do need to uh, let the AI know. That's the local environment and the situation. Uh, yes, the I see. Yeah. I see something that is like kind of introduced into the query somehow, maybe unconsciously for the for the engineer. So it's something that the ROS two AI captures the situation 
of the computer because it does, uh, I don't know, ROS node list, ROS topic list, ROS service list, and then a CPU and whatever information recaptures and then on the question sends all this information. Oh, yeah, that's also the very good question. I think uh, we need to be careful uh, with that. So I think it's doable. And uh, if you want to have like precise and concise answer from the AI, we need to upload those information. But on the other hand, it sounds like that's privacy, right? Yeah. Private data. That's right. So sometimes the user doesn't want to upload any private information to the AI because that's a server yeah. running on somewhere in the cloud. Yeah. So maybe we need to ask before that, hey, do you want to upload your local environment information to the open AI or AI system running on somewhere? Mm. And if that's yes, maybe that can be more sophisticated. But on the other, it's just trading off it about security. Yes. Uh, if, say, if they say no, we cannot do anything like that. Okay, so then what about the following? Another proposal. Okay, so we, we are here <laughs> proposing <laughs> and doing, doing <laughs> thinking here uh, crazy th idea. So what about this? So there is a model that can be downloaded locally yeah. and then it runs locally. So no information needs to be sent because it's yeah. provided yeah. to the model that is installed locally and nothing it's closed. There's nothing is sent. What about that? Yeah. That that sounds uh more reasonable. Yeah. yeah. We can do that. So the ROS to AI uh, uh that that was in my scope. So the backend server can be set as the environment variable. So the default is open AI API server, of course. But if you have somewhere else that that's your private server or own edge device, mm. uh, you can choose. Okay. Yeah. Then definitely you have to take our course on generative AI for robotics because we teach how to uh, build oh, your own model. <laughs> yeah. Sounds great. I, I will do that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm selling here. The <laughs> 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 okay. Then let's continue with more other um, questions. So what about the mistakes that uh, large language models produce? So do you have any funny experience with ROS2 AI that you can tell us? Or uh, how do we have to take care about the questions that we ask to ROS2 AI? So, so we are sure that what it responds is a correct answer. Oh, yeah. So in general, uh, I think that AI provides really good answer at mm -hmm. this moment. But sometimes, for example, like uh, something I feel that's weird is like, a, we let's say we ask the same question, right? G give me a topic list. That's mm -hmm. the, the same question uh, type in uh, like several times. And sometimes response changes. So <laughs> that's kind of like a weird. So okay. I think we should uh, do some like a parameter setting for the AI more to have more consistency or something. I think OpenAI has like a temperature, this kind of like a setting. So I think we can do more. Yeah, that's the one of the experience. And the second one is I want to have feedback from the user. So that's the, that's the one of the purpose, the, the reason I did open source it. Uh -huh. So if you are interested, just try and uh, try try to use it. And if it doesn't respond, and if if, if it does respond like weird answer, mm -hmm. <laughs> we can share, right? So <laughs> yes, that would I'm be... really interested in this kind of like a problem. So. Exactly. So we can yeah. make like a a contest of the uh, on, on the audience about providing the funniest or weirdest response that draws to AI has provided to you. So that could yeah. be a contest of the mo a monthly contest. Yeah, 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 let's do that. That's yeah. very funny. And then, so the people, they are going to try, they are going to be uh, trying to, pr to get those weird answers in order to, yeah. to, get, to get the prize, whatever it is. And then you can get this information in order to debug yeah. and to improve the system. Yeah, improve the system. That's the my purpose. So we can have like a, some like tuning 
uh, in the OpenAI API. So if we have some something like uh, weird answers, this kind of stuff we can do, use it as a parameter to tune the AI. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That would be interesting. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I have to review this podcast afterwards because we have so many things that yeah. we have said to do we need to do <laughs> and then I have lost you know, <laughs> the account of this. Then let me see about more questions. Um, so then, uh, well, I have more or less asked you all the questions that I have about <laughs> uh, about ROS to AI, but now I have some other questions more concrete about large language models. And then, so for the audience, maybe some audience doesn't know what they are large language models. Can you... Uh, explain a little bit what are what they are. Uh, okay, so I'm not the like AI background, but uh, mm -hmm. LLM uh, is like uh, you can use like a general the conversation to iterate the AI. So for any topics, right? So and you can set like a system. The AI system can be set uh, what needs to be answered. So this kind of stuff. So uh, I think the, the the most important thing for the user is uh, you can iterate with AI using general language conversation. I think that's the reason. The, that's the I think that's the only reason uh, why Open AI Chat GPT takes off. Right. What, I don't understand your point. What do you I mean, mean? like. Uh, It's so easy to use. Yes. Right? That's, that's the, I think, the most important thing. Mm -hmm. So, because chat GPT takes off really great. It's yes. not some success. It's a great success. Yes, for, that's right. For the world. And the, the, I think the, uh, the reason why is because it's so easy to use. Ah, okay, okay, got it. It's yeah. just a conversation for the system. That's right. Right? You don't, you don't know anything about it. No API, no nothing. Just type in whatever you want, and it's going to answer. That's why it takes off. So I'm, I'm trying to you know, like provide the same situation uh, the based on this LLM uh, to ROS2. Mm -hmm. So that, I think that's what it is. I don't know very much details about how to like, configure like, AI because that's not something I... I'm working on, mm -hmm. but it, that, that, that's, I think, what LLM is. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, and then um, in your opinion, do you think that the LLMs that you are using, do they understand ROS? Uh, we, I mean, like, a, they, they do understand general information yeah, I mean like a general network so mm -hmm. but we have to make it uh, understand and comprehend more precisely and sophisticated by yourself so we need to uh, make it work so that's the rust to AI comes in yeah so it, it, so rust to AI it's like the door. To get yep. into that information, that's what you mean, right? Yes. Okay, okay, okay. And, and then, um, it also in your opinion, so I'm, I'm very interested on your opinion so about this. So it could be right, it could be wrong, whatever. It's your opinion as an expert that you have been working on ROS a lot. You have been working on robotics a lot. You have implemented ROS to AI. So you have a lot of experience and your opinion is very valuable. Then... In your opinion, so how can large language models be integrated into robotics in another in another way rather than just uh, documentation or answering questions about the system? I mean, like a, a, you, you probably you want to move uh, the robots for specific location, and uh, also you want to control uh, using LLM. I think so. Either speaking or typing, whatever it is. But uh, if we iterate with robots system using 
like a general conversation. I think that would be great. Mm -hmm. So I think, I mean, like thinking about use cases about like entertainment robot or humanoid robot, mm -hmm. maybe that would be necessary, right? To to if they want to come in our field, the human being field, I think general conversation is the interfaces that we use every day with other people. So if they support that, I think that's going to be awesome. Okay. Yeah. So you, you mean like a human robot interface, which is a natu in natural language, is that? Yeah. Okay. Yes. I, I think there should be do that. They yes, of course, of course. That's, that's correct with us, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's, uh, that, that's like a basic skill that the robots have to have. Uh, uh, but yeah. I, I was thinking, uh, in my question, I was thinking in other ways rather than just uh, direct communication. Uh, if it can be used in other ways, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. <laughs> yes. Other ways. Uh, rather other than really communication. Important. So I know, uh, for, to give you an example, so I know that Uh, the uh, Microsoft, they are investing into translating uh, vocal orders into actions for robots. Right? Yeah. Then, I don't know, about using an LLM that translates between um, functionality that you specify in a program and the code that needs to be run in a, in a system. Oh, so the, I don't know. the constructing the code. Yeah, for example, for example, for example. Yeah, that would be interesting, but uh, yeah. Or I diagnosing mean, like, uh, di I, diagnosing errors or... Yeah, I mean, uh, it's... <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay. I, I, I'm not there yet. Okay, so okay. I'm just, yeah, because I'm trying to use like uh, for this specific use case. Uh -huh. or, uh, if... If that's doable, uh, that would be really great, right? So, yes. And it can be applied to anything. Yeah, exactly. Or like a generic system perspective. That would be really useful. Yes. But okay. I'm not sure it can be done at this moment. Okay. So let's ask to the audience that is there to put into the comments about their ideas about how can LLMs can be used in robotics and yeah. any ideas that they have. And then yeah. maybe that we'll... Be, <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. We, we can spark some uh, research or some, some uh, I don't know, some actions from other people just by listening to those or reading those, those proposals. So that's yeah. the purpose of this podcast, okay? So it's to provide useful information and to make people uh, get more knowledge, more ideas, more, I don't know. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There are so many things I don't know. Yes, that's yes, why yes. I'm telling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. It's, it's, yeah. That, that, that's why you're here. It's a, it's a friendly conversation here. Yeah. Then um, one final question then. So what can we expect in the future for ROS2 AI? What are your uh, next plans? Yeah, so the next plan is I think I need more time to design and uh, what we can, what's in it what's in it for us and what we can take advantage of like uh, open AI the best on this system. So the I think I need I think I can take advantage of like a function calling and fine tuning. That's something I'm interested in. I got some ideas uh in my head but I need to learn more details and how to implement uh, what's gonna be better uh to implement Rust to AI. For example, like uh, I, I, men I, I mentioned, like we have like some sub options, right? Execute, query, and uh, status, whatever. Yes. But I think those options should be integrated in AI command because the one of the, my purpose is simply simplified. So just typing Rust to AI and anything else after that. So. If you want, if you don't want to type like execute or yeah. query, just read the context. Right? Yes, so yeah. that's that, that's something. I think it should be more smart, much smarter than that. So that's something I need to do in like uh, maybe short term. 
Uh-huh. And the long term is uh, I want to, I hope uh, this Rust2 AI can be, could be some like agents that works with your environment. And uh, maybe we can support this activity as a community uh, because we do need more feedbacks and, uh, you know, developers, this kind of stuff, especially for the AI side. But if it takes off, we can, if we can have some like a Rust2 agent which is really smart and it can be responsive, uh, you know, precise questions and answers, and even it checks your environment and tell you what is going on, what's wrong with your system. That's that's really useful for like students, ac- academic perspective, yes. and also like beginners to learn. Yeah. So we we do need more developers and users as open source community. So I think that's something I hope I want to see in uh-huh. the future. Okay, that that would be awesome, and not only for the students but also for developers, for Ross yeah. engineers, your Ross developers, because that tool can help you uh, quickly debug, find the error. Yeah, that's a problem in Ross. I mean, in in, in Ross, when we are teaching Ross, teaching how to use navigation and so on, it's very easy. Is is quite easy. Okay, you do this launch file, you put the parameters here, da, 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 and that's it. And then it doesn't work. Why? Yeah. Because you have a typo somewhere, but to find this, there is nothing that says, oh, you have a typo here. No, you don't have that. You just see a system that doesn't work. And then you need to say, okay, let's start Arby's. Let's check the lasers. It's provide. Oh yeah, now the odometry. Now the odometry is okay. Yeah, okay. Let's move the robot. See. Oh yeah, the odometry is okay. Then what? So there is no clear sign of where is the error. So imagine to have this assistant. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I mean, like we 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 do need to go step by step. Yes, I mean, yes, like of a, course. First step, like a system perspective and application, system applications and the user environment, this kind of steps we have to take. But the final goal is that something, you have some, like, you have body, uh, like, a standing by, you know, in ROS2 system. So it, it can tell you uh, the questions and the problems and how to fix it. That would be really interesting. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, awesome plans, and I hope to see them in the. So now we are in January 2024. So let's have a meeting for another podcast episode before the end of the year, where you are going to present all this. What about that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I would love to. But, yeah. I don't know how much time I can. Have. Yeah, just, <laughs> yeah. I'm just joking, yeah. just joking, just joking. You take your time, man. Take your time that you, you are. I, yeah, I understand. I know, <laughs> I know that's a tough work. So your goal is, is very, very cool, but it will require a lot of work and so on. So what I mean, okay, so now serious is that the door of the podcast is open whenever you have a result that you want to present to the audience. That's what I mean. Sounds perfect. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Tomoya. It's been a pleasure to to talk to you again and uh, see you then around the world, maybe in uh, next Roscon. Are you going to come yeah. to, to guess, Europe? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Then I'll meet you there. Yeah, I will meet you there too. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Okay, so that's all for today. But I have a question for you that you can put on the comments of the podcast. It's your response at the following question. is: Do you think that large language models are the key to intelligent robots? So what do you think about that? Let us know. Let me know on the comments of the podcast here. And yeah, that's all for today. Then uh, see you next week with a new experience with a ROS expert. And until then, keep pushing your ROS learning. <laughs>